Bricks here. Today I want to show you what is new in Bricks 1.2, release candidate number 2, which is now available in your Playground account over at try.bricksbuild.io. And for full changelog it's best to head over to our forum and then inside the announcements category you can see the full changelog. Because there have been a lot of bug fixes that I don't really want to talk about in this video, I want to focus on showing you what is new, what has changed, because there's some features that are not so obvious to catch. So I think this video is gonna provide a great basis to just understand those more advanced or like a little bit of um, sort of hidden features in the new and upcoming Bricks 1.2. And let's just start with our container element. So basically we are always looking for ways to, uh, or for little tools to provide you with a better workflow or something that can save you time, especially if you build websites on a daily basis or for more advanced users. And one of them in release candidate two is the new container layout builder. So usually if you wanna, or up until now, if you want to uh, create a layout here using the new container, you would just click here and then you can add inner containers like this. And then if you wanna have padding inside, you would go to your container, you would add your padding. Maybe you would use the copy uh, style containers and then apply the padding to those containers as well. Um, but if you already have a good idea on what you're trying to build, how your layout is supposed to look like, you can now do this much faster using this new layout builder. So you can see here on the top left hand side of my container element, I have this little layout icon. So if I click this one, and this is a really basic version right now on purpose. We just really want to hear from you what is missing here, what we should add rather than trying to replicate all of the container settings and just cram this with too many features. So right now, what you can do, you can just create your container and you can also do a full width here by enabling the stretch options, which is what I'm going to do. And then you can set the number of inner containers. So for example, if I already know I want to have a container full width, with three inner containers, I can just select three here. And then I can select, um, set a padding for my inner containers. So all of them, I want to have a padding of 15 pixel. And then I can click insert container. And you can now see here in a structure panel, it shows me my full width container and my three inner containers. And each container has now a padding of 15 pixel. And you can just, this by default stays open, so you can just keep adding containers like this. So if I know next container I wanna have below here should have two vertical inner containers, then I can just click here. And now I have another container below. You can see here, this is my first container. This is my second root container, which has now two inner containers, which is what we have set here. And yeah, it's pretty basic, but that's how it works. I think it already um, is a great time saver at its current state, but yeah, definitely I'm happy to hear any input in terms of how we can improve this one further. And next up, we added some new controls to our container. So if we go here to our first container, Previously, you had the ability to align your items or justify the content inside. And now you can also align the container itself. So if I'm gonna hide my structure. You can see this better. You can see this is a full width container now. And this is actually something I accomplished just by setting this alignment option here. So usually, or previously, I would have to go to layout and then select my percentage width, drag it to 100, and then it's gonna be full width now. All you need to do is just to click on this stretch icon. If I remove this, you can now see it just takes up the default width of 1,100 pixel. And you can also align this at the start. So you can see here, centered, which is the default at the end, or I can stretch it like this. Okay. The other new addition here is our um, CSS order property. So by default, each container has a order priority of zero. So if I would set this to one, it will show up underneath. So basically that's how this one works. Um, something that you would probably gonna use a lot when you work with mobile breakpoints because then you can easily rearrange your layouts, the order of the layout without yeah, much um, difficulties. This is a really easy way to do this. Um, of course, you can also change the direction and rather than have this vertical, you can have it vertical reversed and you can also use the order to really you know, rearrange them in between each other. 
can make a totally um, completely different flow here. So that's a great little addition as well. Another new addition is the ability to select um, to use a custom HTML tag. So before release candidate two, you're limited to those number of HTML tags. Now you can select custom here and then you can enter any custom tag that you want. Just make sure it's a valid HTML tag, but yeah, you can put in anything you want here in case it's not part of this list. That's custom HTML tag. And another improvement in terms of the um, to clean in order to clean up the interface a little bit on the canvas um, especially if you nest a lot of containers inside and you have maybe a lot of containers really close to each other because you maybe have a layout with six columns then yeah, having a lot of those actions here takes up a lot of space and sometimes yeah, it can conflict a little bit with like you know being able to select um, your container properly so now you can see we've reduced the, the number of icons that show up. So previously we had our edit pencil here, which is still available. But of course you can just click anywhere else inside your container to do this. Um, next up we had our little move hand. So this has basically been merged into this pencil icon. So you can see now if I hover over this pencil, it shows me my cursor now has this move icon. So I can basically just use my you know drag and drop this um, by going over this pencil icon. Adding inner containers stayed the same. And now we've removed the clone and delete icons. They're still available. You can just right click, clone your container like this. Go down here, delete your container like this. And if you really need access to this um, on the element itself, you can always go into the structure panel and they're still available here. And yeah, you can clone from here. You can delete from here. We also removed the tool tips. I think it's pretty clear what um, every icon here does and especially if you used it a few times so there's really no need to have those tooltips here and showing up all the time then the element itself um, we've also repositioned our action icons here so now you only have this pencil icon to edit your element and also of course to just drag it around okay if you right click on it you can clone it you can delete it you can save it as a global element you can copy its styles and again, you have all of those other actions available also here. Next up, the builder toolbar logo links at the top left hand side. If you remember, if you go to in your WordPress dashboard under bricks settings, we have this ability to customize this link. So you can link to a preview on the front end of this page. Um, you can go back to WordPress, so it has the same functionality as this edit with WordPress button. And now you also have the ability to link this to your dashboard directly. So that's possible now as well. And then another time saver, um, which I think is pretty cool. I really like using this one all the time now, is the ability to only use your keyboard to add new elements. So rather than having to go here with your mouse, especially if you're already editing an element, like say I'm editing my um, heading now, and now I want to add another element. So what I would normally do, I would just click somewhere on my canvas or click this little plus icon, and then I go here, and then I click on my element. So now what I can do straight away from here, just by using the keyboard shortcut. So first of all, bringing up the elements, I can press Command, Shift, and E. Okay, brings this one up and it also automatically focuses on the search input here. If you're already in this view, you can also just press Command Shift S, brings the focus here and then you can use your tab key. So if I press tab on my keyboard now, you can see I can navigate through this list here like this. And if I press Shift tab, I go back up. So now if I know, okay, I want to add a button underneath my heading, I just focus on this element and then all I need to do is just press enter. Okay, now I've added my button. I can press tab again, to click enter, and then I can add as many icons as I want. I can click on command Z to undo all of those changes. If I placed, um, selected something wrong, I actually want to have an image here, I would add it like this. So yeah, simple feature, but yeah, definitely useful if you use bricks, uh, if you spend a lot of time inside the builder. Um, in order to edit your, to add new elements onto the canvas really quick 
and just by using your keyboard. Next up, um, so I think, yeah, that's in terms of um, container, that's pretty much it. Um, the panel itself also has a new addition. So you already had the ability to hide your structure panel and you can resize the main panel, but there was no way to just hide it. Um, I was thinking to add this as a keyboard shortcut, but then if you press this by accident and you don't have any additional icon here to toggle this, then yeah, it's gonna be confusing and probably gonna result in a lot of support, unnecessary support. So. That's why we made this really clear how you can do this. And there's only one way to do this right now. And I also don't think this is going to change much in the future. So if I hover over my panel resizing bar here, you can see this little toggle icon. So all I need to do is just to click and this way I can toggle my panel. Pretty simple, but yeah, for the users who are want to utilize this functionality or if you're working on a smaller screen or you really al already have everything in place in terms of your layout and you just want to make some changes here to your text, you can just do it like this and you don't need to deal with the panel at all. Then the structure panel also has some new additions and some fixes. First one being we've changed the structure icon up here, which was pretty similar to our templates icon. So now we use this little, yeah, this new icon here, which I think is a bit more distinct and doesn't look like this template uh, icon anymore. But it's a little improvement in terms of um, UX. And another little time saver is the ability now to click anywhere on the element inside of the structure panel to edit it. Previously, you had to go and hover over those three little dots and then you can click here to edit it. And now you can click anywhere on this element. So you can just click on the icon itself to edit it and also inside of the label. Okay, and then I edit now the icon in that case and you can also rename your elements. So for example, if I say instead of naming this um, button, I can say I wanna have a custom label for this element and which is going to be um, click me. And you can also see immediately in real time this updates here in the panel. So next time I'm editing my button here, it gives me this name basically see and you can change this anytime to something else. Then um, display none. So if you were hiding an element, we had this little indicator here as well. Let me edit this heading. Oh no, let me actually edit a container. Um, display none, which means this element will not show up, will not be rendered on the front end, will not be displayed. And we have this little eye icon here as an indicator. And yeah, when you are using um, smaller breakpoints, this basically did not show up. So that has been fixed as well. Also works between um, smaller breakpoints. And if you want to show it again, you can just click on this little eye icon and it will remove or reset this setting here. So if I click it, you can now see my element is visible again. And this display value, the selected one has been removed. So it's back to its default. Then we had another bug in terms of the scrolling here of the structure. So let me just add a lot of elements. I'm going to put in 55 inner containers. And you can see like, personally, I'm using this all the time now. This little layout builder comes in pretty handy. And now you can see you can scroll up or down here. It's working fine. Also, in terms of rearranging your elements inside the structure panel, we had this behavior um, previously that as soon as you started dragging, all of the containers, like each element would expand automatically. So if you have a lot of containers, like in my case here now, previously, if I want to take this and drag it up, this would all auto expand, um, which was yeah, not a good experience. So now this doesn't happen anymore. You can see nothing is expanding by default anymore. So that's another improvement. And yeah, that's I think those are the main points here in release candidate number two. Like I said, it's available in your Playground account over at try.bricksbuilder.io. If you can just use this little feedback button that you will see inside of the builder to submit the screencast, a little short video, that would be great in terms of um, reporting any bugs and also any improvements that you want to um, mention. And 
The final Bricks 1.2 release that's going to be public and it's going to be available in your Bricks account as a manual download. So this is basically the um, yeah, rollout strategy that we have for this release just because it's such a massive change to Bricks. Um, people who just start using Bricks or people who have been who already bought it and they're waiting for this new container element, um, yeah, you should be good. You can just download it as a manual download. You don't need to migrate anything. If you already have an existing site that you've built with bricks using the section row and container elements, then we need to migrate your existing data. And I already mentioned this also on Facebook a few times that we will provide a one click migrator. And I'm just going to quickly show you how this one is going to look like. So first of all, Bricks 1.2, um, available as a manual download in your Bricks account later this week. Once we got enough feedback as well for the migrator, so people who already build a site with Bricks manually download 1.2, migrate an existing site, there's definitely going to be um, some things that are not working um, as they're supposed to do, simply because we cannot test any possible layout that you might have just an endless num infinite number of um, possibilities, how you set up, how you align, which elements you use, which um, mobile settings you have. Yeah, so it's really, really depend on your input in that regard to make sure that the migrator is as good as it can be for um, as many people as possible. And once we reach that later in May, we will provide this as a one click download. Um, yeah for all of your sites. And I think actually this is a pretty good safeguard, especially if you have client websites and if they would just see 1.2, they're going to update, but they cannot take advantage of the new container because they need to migrate the data, which is obviously something that um, yeah, you um, are going to do. So yeah, I think that helps um, in terms of making sure the migration goes as smooth as possible. And I'm going to show you how the migrator looks like. So now here I'm inside of my dashboard. I'm having a look at all of my pages and you can see on the post state here, for example, this one has been built with bricks and it has already been migrated. Any page or custom post type um, item that has not been migrated that is using the old section, row and column layout will have this little note here, not migrated. Um, this basically tells you, okay, there's Bricks data, but it's the old one, we need to migrate. And the way to do this is just by selecting this page and then under bulk actions, we have this migrate Bricks data. You click apply, it runs it, just takes uh, less than a second to execute and your data will be automatically migrated. And then you go to Edit with Bricks, have a look at the base breakpoint, all of the mobile breakpoints, if anything needs some adjustment or something is really broken. If it really doesn't look like what you've built previously, then really like, please send us a link, let us know via email, the forum, Facebook, um, that we can address this and we can fix this for you and also probably a lot of other users that will have this problem otherwise. You could do a bulk migration just by selecting all of your pages, but I would really recommend that you not do this. Um, yeah, simply because you also wanna make sure that you take um, a little bit of time to just go have a look at each, each page quickly if it needs some adjustment in any breakpoint. Um, yeah, so I would recommend to do this one by one for each page. And yeah, that's basically how the migrator will work as soon as it's available in your download later this week yeah and if you have an existing site um, any feedback here is um, very much appreciated and yeah that's everything about release candidate number two like i said um, the final 1.2 manual download later this week and the migrator and everything for 1.2 as a one-click update later this month. As soon as we approach this, um, some the final stages here, I'm definitely going to update you um, through our channels. And But yeah, I think that's everything from my side. All the information I wanted to share, I've shared. And yeah, looking very much forward to your feedback and happy testing. Bye-bye.